This is question 14 from paper 1 of the 2015 SQA Curriculum for Excellence Higher Maths exam. I'm given the equa equation of a circle and told that it meets the coordinate axis at exactly three points. We're asked to deduce what the value of k is. So obviously we'll need a diagram before we can get a strategy to solve this. So let's work out the centre and the radius of this circle. And then we can maybe proceed. So x squared plus y squared minus 12x minus 10y plus k is equal to 0. Now there's a very easy practical method of finding the centre and finding the radius. Provided your circle equation has 1x squared plus 1y squared, then you can use this method. Look at the coefficient of x, half it, and change the sign. Look at the coefficient of y, half it, change the sign. That's your centre. The radius can then easily be got from the two coordinates of the centre by squaring them and adding them. 6 squared plus 5 squared and then looking at the constant term and subtracting it. If this had been minus k, that would have been plus k. So that's your radius. Now, 6 squared is 36, 5 squared is 25, and that comes to 61. So your radius is 61 minus k. Now, it's interesting that if this number 61 minus k goes negative, you won't have a circle at all. So if k is greater than 61 or even equal to 61, uh, you won't have a circle. If it was equal to 61, you would have a radius of 0. So k, we know, must be less than 61. Otherwise, no circle. So we'll need to look at a, a diagram. There's the y-axis. And there's the x-axis. And on this diagram, the centre, 6, 5, roughly there. And the radius, we don't know. So there's the best we can do. So we now have to figure out how this circle with various different sizes, because k can vary, the radius can vary, with various different sizes, what situation allows us to say that that circle meets the coordinate axis at exactly three points? Now, I think at this point, we'll go to an animation, just so that you can get clear in your mind what happens to this circle as it increases in size. So here we have x squared plus y squared minus 12x minus 10y plus k equals 0. I've got k as 57. That's what it looks like. There's the centre, 6, 5. And let's decrease the value of k. But remember, what we're looking for is the number of points of intersection of this circle with the y-axis and the x-axis at present there are no points of intersection. So we're increasing it. The first time we get a point of intersection is when the x-axis is a tangent to that circle. And we now get one point of intersection between the circle and the axes. As soon as we decrease k slightly f more, we're now getting two points of intersection. They're both on the x-axis. The circle hasn't met the y-axis yet. And you can see what's going to happen as we increase the radius, and decrease the value of k, one, two, and the third point on the y-axis. So there's a situation where that circle intersects the axes at three points. Now, what's the radius at that point? The radius is 6 units, the same as the x-coordinate of the centre of the circle. 
However, if we keep increasing the size of the circle, look what happens. We've now got one, two, three, four points of intersection. Let's continue and something happens, interestingly. This point here, there's only one point of intersection which coincides with both x and y axes. There's another point up here, another point up there. There's actually three points of intersection. You can see them there. One, two, three. And let's increase that further. We're now on to one, two, three points, and another one down here, four points. Two again on the x, two on the y. So we're back to our four points of intersection. And as we increase it, that's all that's going to happen. That situation, as it gets larger, isn't going to change. Two points of intersection on the x-axis, two on the y-axis. So let's decrease the size of the circle, counting the points of intersection. There's four, there's four, there's four, there's three. And I never mentioned the radius at this point. The radius, we'll look at that. It's more complicated than the previous case. But that's three points, four points again, four points, back to three points, two points, one point, no points. So I hope that gives you a better understanding of this situation. So let's go back to our original diagram. So as you saw in the animation, the first time we get a three points of intersection is when the circle is a tangent to the y-axis and the other two points of intersection appear down on the x-axis. And we said that that radius is six. So when circle is tangent, tangential to the y-axis, radius equals 6 units, and there are 3 points of intersection. So the radius, root 61 minus k, is equal to 6. Let's square both sides. So the square root disappears there. 6x six, six is 36. So let's add k to both sides and take away 36 from both sides. We'll end up with uh, k being 25. So that's our first value. We could continue increasing the circle until it passes through the origin. There's another intersection along the x-axis here, and there's a third one on the y-axis up here. So there's one, two, three. And in that case, let's draw the radius in from the origin up to the center and complete a small right-angled triangle. And since the center is 6, 5, this will be 6 along, 5 up, and the radius will be given by the square root is 6 squared plus 5 squared. So when circle passes through origin, radius is equal to the square root of 6 squared plus 5 squared. We know is 61. That's the same as we calculated up here. Radius is square root of 61. Uh, and there are three points of intersection. It's just to state that we know what's going on there. We're answering the question. So the radius, which is the square root of 61 minus k, it will now be equal to the square root of 61. So square both sides, get 61 minus k equals 61. That can only happen if k is 0. So the second possibility is k equals 0. And that's all the possibilities there are.